The aim of what I do is to bring attention to Formula One in a different way, in a more beautiful way. When I started shooting black and white, it evolved into something completely different because it was evoking the past. A lot of it's a little bit blurry. I mean, it's all intentional. I wanted to show some motion and speed. It just feels, feels more raw. It feels more like racing. In 2014, I started shooting with a 1913 Graflex SLR view camera. The Graflex was made in Rochester, New York, and it was manufactured for decades and decades. Some of the crime photographers used them, like Ouija. There's a famous photograph of Margaret Burke White shooting Lower Manhattan. But for me, I love that I'm looking down through a mirror, like a waist level finder, so I see exactly what's happening. The bridge looks, looks incredible, looks like it was built. It looks like we're in the 1860s, you know? So I find a composition, she's my shutter speed, it's almost like testing the wind, and kind of go about my business, just to kind of ignore the world and just take pictures. People started emailing me saying, I don't like racing, it actually drives me crazy, I can't stand it, but I love your pictures and I can't stop looking at them. So I came up with the idea to launch a magazine called Lollipop, which refers to the Lollipop Man in the pit lane. He used to hold a long pole, and it was the indicator to stop and go when they changed tires and refuel the cars. What happened with the first issue of Lollipop was it won a lot of design awards in New York City, and it kind of took F1. It didn't take it by storm, but people started looking at me a little bit differently, like, like what is this exactly, and, and what are you doing? And it was basically a photo narrative of, of the race. Um, no advertising heavy graphic design, and something to be beautiful and collected. I'm limited to 20 photos per session because I only have 10 film holders. The film holders are wood with a groove in the side of them. They're very hard to find. And I'm on eBay searching for them all the time. So right now I only have 10 and occasionally they break. And I'll add a little glue here and there, but it's a very expensive process. So each frame costs maybe seven or eight dollars with buying the film, processing the film, and all that. So the last thing I want to do is go to my lab and look through negatives of bad frames. Here's a car coming into the pits pretty fast. That should look pretty cool, I think. You get a really good sense of what it's gonna look like from a negative. It's very satisfying. And so far, they seem pretty good. Red Bull car. If I get a few, then it's worth the trip. It's really not about quantity. And at this point, I had so many frames. I shot, I think, about 3,500 images on, with this camera. This is the Italian broadcaster. I'm trying to photograph um, kind of everyone in Formula One, not just the drivers, but other journalists, team owners, teams themselves. If you're reading blogs or reading papers, you know their names, but you never see them. So why not bring them to the forefront as well? And they're very influential in you know, making, definitely affecting the sport. For our mechanics watching the monitors. Did some work on Kimi Raikkonen's car with the nose cone the foreground. I like these moments where there's real involvement. It's, it's behind the scenes Formula One. Plus, I just like the access. Like, it's kind of cool. Just kind of walk up here and use my camera as a bit of a passport to get a little closer. I photographed almost every driver in the paddock now, and uh, the one person I was most nervous to photograph was Kimi Raikkonen, because I'd been a fan of his for 10 or 15 years, but I couldn't tell him. I would just been too awkward. So basically, when I went photographed Kimi, I just handed him the camera. And then suddenly he was vulnerable because he was like, he didn't want to drop it, he didn't know how to use it. He looked through it and I think he liked it. And suddenly I was you know, showing him how to focus, I was resetting the shutter, changing the film holders. It's very hard to get access to shoot a portrait even now that I've become known. But I think if, if Americans saw these drivers and saw that they were fit, good looking guys, multimillionaires, dating beautiful women, risking their lives, all that, um, I think it would catch on.